and welcome into the Section 109 podcast. You might be watching this on video. What? <laughs> you also might not, because I might have screwed up the editing. You never know what has happened between the start of this podcast and the airing of it, but at least it's on audio for now. I'm here in Studio Breezy with Mix and Toby, as usual. They will probably make some podcast appearances with Jay and special guest, return guest, Mr. Marcus Nagelstad. Good to be here. Glad to have you. Um, Marcus, you were on episode 46, so we don't necessarily have to go over your whole bio um, because folks can go back and listen to that. But catch us up really briefly, you know, for anyone might, who might have come to this podcast late or come to be a new CFC fan. Who are you and uh, how did you get to CFC? Uh, well, Marcus Nagelstad, CFC striker. Um, how I got here um, two years ago uh, when Peter Fuller was still the coach. He, he gave me a call. Um, Shut up. Yeah, he had. Um, I played at Hartford with uh, another old CFC guy, Gabby Torres, who uh, I guess had told him to sign me, basically. Yeah, I, I heard that same story. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. And I got down here, and, you know, it was kind of during COVID. So it, it wasn't, you know, it was kind of different. So, you know, the market wasn't as hot. So. But came down here and, you know, loved every minute ever since. And look, we're really, we're really glad that worked out, you know. Yeah, yeah big time. Got a, got a cup of coffee in the USL Championship. You also played uh, all over the place in Norway. Yeah. Um, what's the biggest difference between Norwegian soccer and American soccer? That's a great question. Um, Besides the accents. Besides. <laughs> are, um, also, like, as part of that, are there a lot of foreign players that play in Norway? Or is it similar to here in the lower divisions where it's mostly domestic-based? Um mostly domestic but some foreign yeah not not a lot um it's most i mean you have a good good amount of your Euro, like europeans from around europe but you don't have a lot of south americans or africans really too much so it's really like the countries that are close basically it, well yeah because within europe you have free labor or like you can move around ah, with, of course. so like that's not really an issue for work permits and stuff so there are a good amount of, of people from, you know, from Spain or from Holland or England or, or whatever they're from. Like, so. so. And so there's no like visa dealing with. If that. you're in the European Union. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Which Norway isn't, but still part of that uh, free free trade agreement. Oh, interesting. I didn't even think about that because obviously like they're not Schengen. They are Schengen. They are Schengen, yeah, but they're travel, not. Yeah. Oh, not, Schen not European Union. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I get to be honest, even though I lived in the European Union for two years, yeah. I still get all of that confused. Uh -huh. yeah. So I'll also start, I think, this podcast in this way. I think Marcus watches more soccer than any soccer player we've ever had on the podcast. I know this in like my conversations with Marcus. Like We tend to ask like players, who was your favorite player growing up? And by the way, who was your favorite player growing up? Growing up, Ronaldo, the original one. Yeah. 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 How, about, how about now? How about now? Um... Uh... Pedri. I love it. Yeah. I love it. If anyone's watching the video, because the video exists, uh, Marcus is wearing a Barcelona jersey. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you watch a lot of soccer. So what are you watching when you can, when you're not doing other things? <laughs> Everything, really. I watch... Um, you watch Bar 11? Barcelona's my team. So. You watch oh. 11 sports a lot? <laughs> Sorry. I just okay, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go back no, to the, I do, the actual question. I do actually watch, you know, some of our teams around the league, you know, especially if we have a game against them coming up i'll you know i'll give it a watch but other than that barcelona is my team so i watch them play i watch you know i have my my breakfast breakfast soccer with the english premier league you know it's kind of a, a ritual and champions league obviously i watch usl championship a bit of mls like yeah and i i love the sports so i just i love i love watching it for both learning purposes and entertainment in general do you have any uh, teams that you think might make a deep? I know we're in like the quarters now of the uh, Europa League and the and the Champions League and the Europa Conference League. Do you have any teams that you're kind of paying attention to now? Like, ooh, this is this team's interesting right now. Still in it. Uh, that's interesting. Well, Napoli, I think, have a real good chance of making it to the final. They kind of got lucky with ending up on the other side of City, Bayern, and Real Madrid. So Very good draw for them. So I feel like they have a very, very good chance of making it to the final. And then... That would be cool. Yeah, playing one of the three big guns there, so... And they are the surprise of European soccer this year, right? Like, for they most are. people. I mean, they're, what, 19 point, points clear in, in Serie A, and 
they're really fun to watch as well. Like some of the players, Cardona and Oshiman, just killing it. I think they have two hundred million dollar transfers in, in the uh, in the off season. I hope. I hope honestly. I hope neither one leaves just because it'd be cool to see them build something. But like, <laughs> we understand how business works. Exactly. Somebody's yeah. gonna come in. I mean, the rumors are Real Madrid for one hundred and eighty for Cavaradona. Yeah. Um, or I think it was Real Madrid was the rumor I saw, and those mm. are rumors, right? But like, yeah, they're probably. Yeah, I can't see him go there really, but so one of my roommates in Italy was a Georgian guy, and yeah. so I'm always anytime I see a Georgian player, I'm texting him. Right? Well, mm -hmm. now there's an incredibly famous and maybe world class. Now yeah. I realize it's only been one season, so it's not or one and a half seasons that he's been operating at this level. But boy, does he look like the real deal! Oof, yeah, he's and like Osimhen just hasn't stayed healthy. He's had yeah. flashes of this for several years, right? But man, and then the way they replaced Koulibaly, who's like getting older, but was an absolute like one of the best center backs outside of the big teams in the world, mm -hmm. like for many years. And they replaced him with like a South Korean guy that Italians were very racist against, to be quite frank. They were like, Korean. Oh, a Korean guy. He's not going to be able to play soccer, like all the right. bad stereotypes. And then now, of course, like they absolutely Napoli fans love him. Like he's, you know, I guess they've never watched a Spurs game. Have they? No, apparently not. And also they <laughs> haven't watched like the, the stereotypes about like Asian football or Asian soccer being like only big, like technical players. There's no big, strong players. Like, that's not true. Right. And and maybe like there was a reason the stereotype existed at one point because in general, but now you have like players that are like very varied and very different. And yeah. like, yeah, you look at the uh, Kim, Min Jae Kim, I think is his name. Um, he is not only like a spectacular just soccer player, he is a physical beast. He runs through people and he pushes people and he just like plays like the exact opposite of like all the stereotypes that would, yeah. that you would play. And I, I love what Napoli's doing, even though they're in Serie A and they're, you know, not, they're not Fiorentina, like they're not one of the big teams. So yeah, no, but they, they do represent the league in a really good way because it's, I mean, the league's been trending downhill for, for a while and now since it's the nineties. Yeah. They've now they have three, three teams in the quarterfinal and, it's good to see see them being competitive again. And even Milan is interesting, right? Like they're decent, and they're really kind of I feel like an odd collection of like players. Yeah. And I think they're fun. Oh um, yeah. They're and, and Zlatan's still there being being Zlatan like right, Olivier yeah. Giroud like he was he never was bad, but like he's continued to operate right. at the very high level. Like when people I think would, myself included would have thought he would fall off. Like yeah. Brahim Diaz still is still there, right? Too, he's yes. one of my yeah. favorite young. Rafa young. Leao, yep. really good. Theo Hernandez, another another hundred million yeah. dollar potential player. Rafael Leao, yeah, Theo too, probably. Yeah, Theo too. He's he's best, trending for sure. Best left back in the world. It's got to be up there, right? Yeah, Alfonso is pretty good. Uh, Gabby Torres, <laughs> Gabby Torres, Gabby that's Torres. right. Yeah, JP. That's right. <laughs> JP, shout out JP. Uh, yeah, well, it's gonna be interesting. We have. Uh, we have some new players this year and uh, going to be some new idols for some, for some, um, for some new fans. Yeah. I am. I'm, uh, I, I, man, I, my life is so crazy busy right now with like multiple things going on and I missed the past two home games because I was out of town and I'm so ready to sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch both of those games. I haven't had a chance cause I'm addicted. I mean, I'm here on the podcast and you know, you guys are doing the same thing, but like, I'm super excited to, to, catch consecutive games in person to under like to to understand who how the team's going to operate because like i it's it's been new like rod was new and then there were new pieces and then now there's double pieces you know it's almost like a collective grouping of pieces sometimes when we bring players in to and how we operate with this league and where we're at and whatnot but i'm really excited to finally sit down and like be able to watch and see and see how rod's uh, architecture works through the the players that he's chosen i'm so ready to be able to do that i need to just like cancel everything else i have going you on. do you need to you need to get rid of those things <laughs> uh marcus we're coming into year two of of the rod underwood era right, right? um i know it's early but I, I guess and you don't have to give up too many like you know tactical things or whatever else in case somebody uh, in this league decides to do scouting but i'm curious if you're seeing um a build on last year, right? Like last year we were the new, you had a lot of, we have a lot at Stumptown guys and you had the CFC guys. Right. And so you didn't have like this group that had played together at least cohesively. And this year it's not everybody, right? But you're one of the guys coming back and Taylor's coming back and, yeah. you know, depending on if Damien's one of the starters and then Alex and Rich and right. yeah, there's a lot of guys coming back. Do you see like a, a version two, like building on or is it too early to kind of know? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
we've we brought back you know some of the key guys and they'll keep you know some consistency and kind of know what rot's about and you you among all all people yeah you and alex yeah. bringing back like the majority of the goals between you alex and taylor right no it's true you know rich is still there you know colin who else yes da damien's still there so um no i mean it's just about taking it to the next level you know rod hasn't changed much she has his philosophy and it's just about can we make it even better so we've brought in some really really talented players from you know other teams and i think i think we look really really strong stronger than last year so it's the preseason a lot of uh, fans probably haven't had a chance to see or if they've seen maybe they saw the Atlanta game or, which was very early on or they saw the Knoxville game which was different who are some players that you've got to play with in practice that maybe um, folks should watch out for I'm not asking you to make any predictions but like people like oh, you're gonna like that guy oh uh, it's tough because I think there's a lot of talent there's a lot of guys you can I name like. you can name multiples for sure yeah um Tolly's one big guy just good defender um have you played against him yet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because yeah, last time right. I asked you that question, this was like he had only been here a week, and you're like, yeah. "Well, we've been on the same team all week." So right. no, I mean, last time <laughs> you you asked me about him, I wanted to probably say more, but I was like, "Oh, he's only been here for a couple of days. I'm, I'm not going to say oh, that's, too much." I don't even think it was a whole week. That's yeah, true. I, I already knew he was the real deal. Like you could tell, first practice, just warm ups, like he was a solid player and just defeat he has for you know a guy his size and also it's obviously the physicality he brings is just is rare at this level so he'll he'll help us so much um aiden as well obviously lefty in the back is great um a gene obviously really really good goalkeeper huge guy will he's help, enormous will help us so much um I've been wanting to have that guy on the podcast since he played for Cal U and they came here and I, I sat behind the goal one time and just listened to him talk and command and I was like that I just want to ask that guy questions. Yeah, so it's good because we just we have so much leadership as well, just so many good characters just take it under responsibility and just just a really good group of guys and now I'm I'm really excited. Some of the midfielders as well, uh, Beto's really good. Uh, Luis just came in, but you could tell it was first practice today. But just did he? Oh, he such, practiced today. Such a good player. That's yeah, awesome. just um, we have so many options as well, right? Like last year, I feel like although Ian had a good season, it's a good player and still is a good player. Like he got it. He got to, He got to move on, which is great. And he got yeah, to move up, like which, pursue that dream, right? Which like, is awesome for him. But this year, I feel like we have three, four options, you know, and and that spot that can play together with you know probably Alex and Rich. So. You know, it'll help us in where we have, you know, three games in a week or just injuries or suspension. So whatever it is, we just we just have a lot of depth. And I think the roster just looks really, really complete. It feels that way from an outsider's perspective. Like, uh, it's funny because maybe I'm, I'm not exactly sure of like the the total numbers that creates a roster. Full roster is 22, 22. But, yeah. but some teams run less than 22. Right. right? But for me, um, like seeing more signings continue on whenever I thought in my brain for some reason, I was like, oh, I guess we're done. This is the team. And now I'm now I'll still see announcements coming in. And I'm like, man, that's, these are and I'll of course, I YouTube scour and I watch people. Yeah. I'm like, man, these pieces, it's just it, it feels like an awesome group collectively. It, yeah. it feels like one to 11 you could replace from the bench pretty easily and, and have now I've got to watch soccer. You know, I've got to watch you guys play and really to understand that but it seems like there's a lot of interchangeability there yeah no except for a marcus backup we don't have one of those <laughs> yeah, <we don't> <laughs> kind of yeah there we go there we go um so marcus uh you know i know we're we're a bit add on this podcast last season oh, you won the you won the golden ball yeah and the golden boot so for the league's best player and the league's top scorer yeah. we haven't had we haven't had you on since then no has it has it worn off are you still feeling pretty good you I mean, still feel you still got a smile when you wake up and you see that <laughs> fake trophy that does, probably doesn't exist <laughs> in the Sneeza. Yeah, um, no, obviously it feels good to be recognized for your work, like same as you do anything, right? Like you you put in a lot of work, you know, just to be able to, you know, be the best you and you know just trying to deliver every every Saturday or whatever day it is, and it does feel nice to be sort of acknowledged for that. So yeah, no, it's it's great and. You know, obviously, 
gives you a bit more confidence and no, I mean, can't complain. Now, last season, you didn't start for the first few games, right? True. You can't, and you got signed late. You were not exactly the Luis Garcia Sosa of last season, yeah. but like you were one of the last signings. Oh, I see. Um, and it was like, oh, and I, this, I kind of feel about Luis like I felt about you last season because I knew you and I know Luis a little bit. Right. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a big contributor. And then like the first three or four games, it was like Marcus is getting two minutes or no minutes. And yeah. and then you you burst onto the scene. So I will say I think it's even more impressive, number one, that you scored so many goals in, in less time. But let's talk about some of the stats of last year. So obviously we mentioned golden ball and golden boot. 19 goals in Nisa, 20 goals overall. We count on this podcast, we count the Independent Cup as important because yeah. it, it meant something. Um, seven assists, seven primary assists, uh, and a hockey assist. Okay. An MLS assist. You know, MLS counts the uh, the pass before the pass on, in their assist. Yeah. MLS? Yeah, MLS does. Yeah. So you can call them MLS assists or hockey assists. So Matthew, uh, who's not here to defend like himself. soccer does, but I, yeah, MLS does too. Like that's on some, the official stats. Yeah. That's why you see sometimes that they'll have like 22 assists or that whatever. Was in there a womp, womp. Womp, womp. Oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Which is That's just about mostly MLS. It is, so. but the the thing on this podcast is that Matthew does uh, make sure that we and the club. Now the club doesn't publish hockey assists as part of the thing, but he does track them and helps track them to keep them for the so the club has them right. Uh, obviously, they're they're important. They're important. You don't, but it's you know as far as stats, you can't really compare. Also, you know? like if somebody, yeah, has, yeah it's, it's not. It's analytical if you're in the weeds. You know what I mean? But it's not like, well, he had five hockey assists last year, so it's like... Well, where's Matt to defend himself right now? Um, (laughs) Not here. But we do have it written. You did have a hockey assist, which the year before you did not. I don't think you had any. I think you had all primary. So you had seven and one. Uh, You played in 28 matches with 24 starts. Mm -hmm. Um, We included, I think, I don't remember actually which ones went into that one. And that was 2,136 minutes. Okay. Now, how many PKs did you score last year? Seven? Seven, I think. How many of those did you draw? Pretty sure it was five, right? It might have been five. Yeah, I think so. What is the art to drawing a penalty? Because it's not just going down like like you got shot, a la Neymar, because that backfires, right? Like he doesn't get now calls yeah. sometimes. So like, how do you? Is it about drawing the contact at the right moment? Like, what's the what's the secret sauce? No referees listening. Um, let's see. Um, because I don't think I've ever seen a player draw five penalties. Uh, no. No, it is it is sort of a skill. And you didn't uh, draw one in the year before. No, we didn't have a single penalty the year before, I don't think. We didn't really spend any time in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, except for what? True. <laughs> except for what? I don't L- think long throw. Except for long throw. Yeah. Jay hates long throws. <laughs> I don't hate long throws, I just don't like that. Yeah. The only offensive strategy continue. We don't right, even right. <laughs> no, but it's it's about anticipating the contact, I'd say. Like usually you can you see a defender come in and you're like Okay, how can I kind of manipulate myself and the ball to kind of keep the ball away from their foot? Yeah, but make sure that he gets me instead of the ball, like whether it's just like getting a little extra touch or just putting my body sort of in harm's way. You could say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good way to describe yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, I, I suppose it's that. And I guess it's just going down at the right moment you see you know a lot of guys drawing contact and they take another step or two and then they go down or you know then you just got to be got to be alert and sort of make the referee make the decision yeah and just sort of you just kind of not that you like you know uh, act or anything but like you got to sort of time it in in a way uh, where i guess it, it looks maybe worse than it is did you do you Okay, I'm going to ask you about a particular player. Did you look at Kyle De Silva and know he was going to kick you when you uh cuz you played against him at practice all year the year before? Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> when you drew that penalty uh, against Syracuse, I was like, "Oh, he knew." Uh, yeah, I mean, you you practice with a guy for a whole year, you know, you pick up some tendencies, right? And you know n- not to knock Kyle, I I like him, he's still a dear friend of mine, but you, you knew you, you knew you know kind of what he's about and he's he's very aggressive and you can sometimes take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't have to do your homework on that one. No. You kind of just already knew. Right. Um, I, I know we're, we're speaking about, uh, I'm, I'm not going to call it diving, uh, but we're speaking about that, that type of play in the box. Thank you. I, I wasn't on the last podcast, so I'm, I'm sure that you guys talked about this, but thank you for flopping and holding your leg and flailing uh, at, against Michigan Stars <laughs> because the one... Bad rap this sport gets besides people who think it's boring, but that's just because they don't have enough brain cells. Right. 
is the flopping and 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 the the faking of injury or whatever. And and it got annoying by watching him because I just like from the stands it's like oh gosh you know yeah. fuck you. And then when you did that I was like oh. I love this guy. I already loved you, but I was like, oh my God. So I just want to say thank you because since we were on that subject, when you did that, I I immediately got on my phone. My wife was pissed at me because I was making a gif of that yeah. on driving home. She's like, drive. I'm like, no, nah, this has to go out on Twitter like tonight. <laughs> like I was putting it in he the was, group chat. He was the one who made the gif that, that goes around the, the short the short form one. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah that was in Jay. the car on the way home from the game. I was like, there's no way I'm missing this opportunity right I now. No, that it. was that was. That was a lot of fun. I can't believe I got two game suspension and like a two hundred and fifty dollar fine from the league. It's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that piece. Holy shit! I re- yeah, that's... Breezy will give you two hundred fifty after this. <laughs> yeah, I was say we should uh, we should just raise a collect. We just need a, 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 listeners of this podcast just start giving start giving Marcus randomly twenty bucks till we get him to two fifty so we pay his fine. Uh, I feel like you deserve that one. Um, also, don't get suspended again for that. Though no, it was worth it. No, I learned I learned my lesson. I guess. We... But also, like you know, the one time it's fine. It's I mean, it's yeah. really, it's a yellow card offense, right? Correct. You, sh- you shouldn't get suspended for that. I didn't start to fight. He chose to start to fight. Also, you didn't even fight back when he had his hands around your throat. Yeah, no, so I don't know why. Just stood there. The, you know. It's guy. crazy. Well, it's like it's, most It's like most things in NISA. Who who does know? No. I no. Know. You're right. That's, <laughs> it's a problem. Do you set goals for yourself on num- before you start each season? Like number of goals you want to, you don't have to say them out loud here, but like, do you set goals for yourself? Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, it's, it's more about just, I want to score every game, every, every game I play, I want to score. If, if I don't score, I'm, even if we win, I'm not like fully satisfied. I just have that, you know, hunger in me just, so I guess if we play 25 games, I want 25 goals, but it's not like I'm, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to reach this or going to reach that. Like, cause then it becomes forced. Cause then you play three games and you don't score and then, oh, I have to catch up and then, Right, you kind of, if you stress about that, you you know you know you're gonna forget about how to do things right and how you get to the goals in the first place, right? So, it's not really. I don't have like oh, I'm gonna score this number, but you know every time I step on the field, I'm. You want I'm at least trying, one. I want at least one. Yeah. Where where, maybe you can't answer this, but where do you think that hunger comes from? Because we talk about position players and how the the mentality of different positions are different. Goalkeeper is an insane psychopath. Uh, middle midfield. I'm just kidding, obviously, but midfield is a, a very composed, uh, depending on which role they play. But a striker is something that we really haven't talked about from a mentality spec- perspective on here. So, where do you think that hunger comes from? Is that because that's the position that you're on the field? That's the job that, that you're there to do, or do you know where that comes from? Um, yeah, I, I guess it, it is my job, right? So it's if I haven't scored, oh, I, I'm, I'm you know you can assist or you can do other things well, but like. Ultimately, as a striker, that's that's what you what you're on the field to do, right? So, I guess it's that you know the satisfa- satisfaction of a, you know completing your task, I suppose, and obviously just scoring goals in general. For you, you guys probably done it at some level, right? Like whether it's well, at Jay has whether it's at <laughs> you know Highland Park or in PE when you were a kid or whatever it is, it's accelerating, right? It's just my day's okay now. I, I guess it can just be. <laughs> It's sort of become like an adrenaline junkie, right? Just because it's mm. you're chasing that high of just mm. scoring a goal. It's just an amazing feeling. That's so. that's what I think. Yeah. If if I had to pinpoint something for myself, which I've never played at a high level, but it is that adrenaline. And yeah. I think like for a striker, it's so good to have that like natural, instinctual adrenaline when it comes to to to, to completing a task like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, the quote for this to me, Marcus's drug is goal, scoring goals, <laughs> <laughs> which is very wholesome, uh, by uh, the way. Very wholesome. How do you feel about assists? And if you come out of a game with an assist, are you, let's say you don't score, but you get an assist. How you feeling? Oh, no, I, it's still an offensive contribution, right? So yeah, I, it, maybe it doesn't give you quite the same joy as scoring a goal yourself, but it's still, it's still something I value. Like I see a lot of strikers with, 20 goals and no assists and it's it makes you a more complete player that you're able to you know pick out a pass or not always take the shot yourself but f- you know if someone's in a better spot you you know you, know, you, you pass the ball right so, so if, if you're playing flower city you bring four players in and then pass to somebody for a tap in right it was the Sero. so yeah because i mean ultimately it's a team game right so if you score a goal but you lose two one it doesn't help anyone right so right. Mm. 
so now it's assists are or something I value a lot as well. So that was a, that was a five nothing game where he had four goals and then the one goal to or how many the that was the five five one I think yeah five, that was five, five one. one yeah. That was a fun game. Sorry. Just, that was a yeah. fun game. Yeah, it was. That was a fun game. And you had a free kick in that game and then two other goals. Or three other goals. Yeah, free kick and a pen and two. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That was that was fun. Uh, you have three goals so far this preseason, which count towards the record. Is and four? you I I think <laughs> yeah. I think you have three more like what what was your what was your other goal? Knoxville, Huntsville, two against Atlanta. Oh, maybe uh, maybe Matthew has the count wrong. So let's say it's four. <laughs> uh, I asked Matthew for these stats pre pre this. All right. Um, so if you have four <laughs> pre this preseason, uh, that means you need fourteen more to break Luke's record. Yeah. Um. That that, that will give you thirty nine in your CFC career. So far, right now, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's just just so everybody knows where we're at. <laughs> um, I think you can you know that that's still a heavy lift, right? Like if realistically 14 goals in a in a regular season of 24 games i think you can i think you can beat it but also that won't be a that'll be a good season if you get 14 goals for being honest like you want to get a lot more obviously you want one per game if you can yeah. if you can get it but 14's a it's a reachable number it is yeah I'd, if you stay if you stay healthy and we play well and a lot of, a lot of ifs if knock I, on yeah, wood if i stay healthy i would i'd be disappointed if i didn't reach it do you look at things like that i didn't even know until you know, these guys kind of reminded me of it, but I mean, it'd be a cool thing to do. Obviously, it's, it, I mean, it's not the everything, but like, yeah, yeah it would be fun. You, I'm not gonna lie. You'd enter the the realm of, you know, Luke's the current all time leading scorer. You're in second. Yeah. Um, if you that Zach is the all time appearance leader. Okay. Juan's the all time assist leader. You yeah. know, it's it's rarefied air. Like these are, you know, these are legends you're, you're already in some way shape or form a club legend right but then on paper you become the club like you yeah. know club's leading scorer right i mean it's and maybe maybe you play several more seasons here and you set that way out of reach of everybody right like, yeah i mean it's so it's a city and a club i've i've fallen in love with so being sort of part of the history i'm sure maybe someone would if i break it someone would probably break it at, you know at some point in the future but it's uh no it, it would be cool to to be you know to to have at least have that for a little bit now you you mentioned that the club in the city <clears throat> that you you've fallen in love with now i'm sure on the the previous podcast which i will continue to reference because i wasn't there we probably asked you some questions about the city yeah but uh, um, like what was your favorite spot to do this at you know those questions that we do but now speaking that you, you now that you've been here for a while yeah what is it about the city that that made you fall in love with it uh it's it's a lot, but just the people are are unbelievably friendly and open, and you always from day one. I you know I remember we got like a me and my wife got like a welcome basket and a note from the fans, and it's just it's a, it's little right, small, but it's something you that's not a given. It, you know that doesn't happen everywhere. It's just the way you've taken care of the way every you know when I'm out walking my dogs and I meet someone that cares about the team, just how. Whatever it is, just it's so much love, and so people are so good at expressing it as well. Not awesome. just, you know, people are like, oh, a like on whatever social media you're on or whatever. But like here, I feel like people are so open and they really express it, and you just really feel valued here. And then obviously other parts, it's climate's great. I'm from Norway. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm used to the cold right here. I feel like I'm on vacation every day. Like, it's just, <laughs> that so, is amazing. like there's nature is beautiful. There's so many cool spots mm -hmm. you have, you know, obviously the, the whole, the river walk you have, you know, sunset rock up on lookout mountain. There's so many really cool spots and so many good restaurants and just no, I think it's a really good, really cool, cool city. Man, we need to hit up uh, visit Chattanooga and get them to get, clip Mark this. as their sp as their, <laughs> as their sp one of their spokespeople. Yeah. Uh, speaking of restaurants, Marx is a bit of a foodie for anyone Ooh, who nice. doesn't know. Same I don't know if you would time. describe yourself as that, but I would describe you as okay, that. Yeah. Um, where are you eating lately? Where's the, where's your, what's the, do you have any favorite go-to spots? I know Aaliyah, last time we talked, was one of the places where you're like, I love this place. If I could eat here every day, I would. Yeah, it's like, a bit pricey. But, you know, well, but <laughs> I don't know if any of us in this room have the budget to eat there every day. Yeah. Uh, definitely not, but I have broken my budget with Aaliyah specifically. Yeah, no, times. for for the right eradication, right, right? That's yeah. that's the place to go. Um, but outside of Aaliyah? Outside of Aaliyah, I like, um, 
I, I like Indian food a lot. So sitar, I go good amount. Thai food, there's uh, what Thai is on. There's a spot I really like. I get get food there, a good amount. I'm so okay, sorry to cut you off, but most people will say Thai food mm-hmm. and then they'll talk about downtown. But Thai San, it's it's different. It is. Yeah, oh, it is. It's, yeah, I've tried the other spots. There's like the sweet basil one. There's another one downtown as well. It just doesn't measure up nope. at all. Thai San is it, c- continue. Sorry. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, you know, Toto's decent for like you know um asian type food uh there's some good spots where you can sit outside when it gets hotter like oh, yeah. uh state of confusion's really nice nice sit yeah. outside it's really good yeah no i just you know, i like you know trying different different restaurants and needing new things and yeah I'll, I'll uh i'll get your info after this and i'll shoot you a list my coworkers and i are building like a restaurant we think you should go to list okay. for nice. our clients awesome because a lot of people are like Oh, yeah, well, Sticky Fingers and Mellow Mushroom. They say all these things that are downtown. Like, in wait, the hold 90s. on, hold in on. The 90s. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, where, what are you talking about? Like, I some I, I have friends the other day. I'm like, you guys been to Mayan Kitchen? And they're like, no. And I'm like, I haven't even heard of that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's just yeah. so many good places. Mayan Kitchen is nice as well. Yeah. I've been there a few times. That, that was Juan and Felipe's fault that I went to that. I went there. Actually, more, more like just Felipe's fault. Felipe was like, get the skirt steak. Oh. Got to go to Mayan Kitchen, <laughs> oh, get the yeah, skirt steak. Do you remember? Those guys are obsessed with that skirt steak. Oh, my God. The, the, it was very it's, good. It's the Churrasco El Carbon. Oh, those guys I get the that, same uh, one, bro. The pineapple drink they get as well, always. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, we went there together one time with did, Pipe and with Michelle. Pipe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been there with both of them, and they, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a good spot. Shout yeah. out, Pipe. We miss you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Floridian boy again. Yeah, he is. Speaking of likes on social media, you've been a bit spicy on Twitter lately. Dude, uh. your Twitter is... <laughs> So I'm not on Twitter. The listeners of this podcast okay. will know I end up talking about it. But I, I get sent more of your tweets. Uh, <laughs> because if something the thing about not being on Twitter, it's beautiful. Right. Is like I get sent – if something big happens, I'm going to find out about it, okay. especially in our little world. So I get right. sent your, your tweets. Are you just enjoying your uh, your Twitter more lately? Or are you extra spicy? Do you think you're not extra spicy and I'm just making that up? Like, uh, um, I don't know if I'm extra spicy. I think it's just like the guys that know me in the locker room and stuff, they know I'm just – I enjoyed the banter a little bit and like whether it's a comment to a teammate or a little nudge to someone in the league it's there's just so much stuff going on in our league that is you know very questionable yeah so i don't know i just feel like you know there's nothing wrong with holding someone a bit accountable with a joke or two what his what you do well on twitter is uh so you're not a troll right so trolls are anywhere and everywhere People who are good at Twitter are good at timing. Right. And you're good at And timing. Mark's the sniper. Like a, <laughs> yes, a sniper. It's perfect. Like, it's, like, it's like an outside the, bo- uh, outside the box shot for Rod Underwood. You're not allowed to shoot from outside the box, but you are allowed to score from outside right, the box. Right. Yeah. That's, that's Marcus on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hilarious yeah i uh your one knoxville tweet was fantastic oh, um, yeah. just uh, just it's just like silly um you're what yeah, you're it's at, harmless right it's, it is it's yeah. fun i'm not trying to hurt anyone you're just... i think you walked the line wonderfully yeah um spicy was a fun word there but like i think you walked the line wonderfully the atlanta tweets were fun when you quote tweeted the the uh, some one of the fans or one of the um blogs i can't remember that like oh yeah said something about uh, whatever by the way have you seen atlanta's like good in mls now i know yeah. they've let in three goals and for what 360 minutes, the same as we scored on them in 45. So. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm honestly, I'm I'm really happy they're doing well, and you know, just seem like a great bunch of guys and some really talented players. So and they signed that big Greek dude that's playing yeah. on top number seven for yeah. them. And I, I can't say his name because I can't pronounce Greek names. Yeah. But he is. Like, he reminds me, I told this to Matt the other day, he reminds me of Christian Chaney. Like, hell on wheels. Like, physically a monster. Like, uh-huh. when he starts running for it, like, he, he, and then, like, I don't know. He just, he's good. Yeah, and Almada has been unbelievable so That free far. kick he hit the other night? They probably won't keep him past the summer. But. No. <laughs> no. But also, like, the wild thing about Atlanta is, like, they have enough money that they could. If he yeah. if he is willing to stay or whatever else. Right. I don't think they're going to for a long time, but they could hang on to him for the MLS season, right? That's and, like, yeah, that's make it to the end of the season yeah. or whatever. But somebody's going to pay, including, like, maybe Man City or something, is going to pay real money. In my career mode on FIFA, he always ends up at Man City. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but he always ends up <laughs> that, at Man that's City. That's a big step, but I'm sure there will be clubs lurking out there uh, uh i feel like where, where where do you i'll say where i think you should go after but where do you think you should go no what's the next step what's the next logical step let's say like ix ix is a great shout i was thinking mid-table spain yeah 
And by mid table, I don't. I mean like a Via Real, who's like the top half of the yeah. table. Like, yeah, that would that would be. Yeah, that's not a bad bad option either. Mid table, like, uh, historic team. Yeah, team yeah, like a Sevilla or something yeah. like that. Just Sevilla. Yep. Just don't go for the Man City or Bayern Munich. Yeah. and Spend three years on the bench. That's. Yep. It's like what Almiron did, right? He went to Newcastle, and I w- yeah. I wouldn't say to go to Newcastle now. He's playing because good now. Newcastle's now like got a lot more pressure to win. Yeah. But Newcastle at the time when he went there, like right, yeah, they were a big club, but they weren't. A, they weren't super good so he got the opportunity to play and you look at like it took him a couple of years to adjust right, right. but now he's one of the standout players this year in the premier league yeah like uh, of the non-giant teams like he's mm-hmm. he's yeah he's great not not giant yeah the saudi oil money hadn't hit just yet or yeah. whatever wherever well they are a massive for. club historically yes of yeah. course yeah i mean just not in the modern it, like them in leeds like now you think about newcastle and leeds and leeds is in the in the top flight now but like if you grew up in the like 90s into the 2000s you're like who but then you learn about history and you're like oh one of the most massive clubs in the world technically yeah talking about it right also back to tweets your last tweet about um about nisa and the lack of attendance and people at the games uh was this podcast it couldn't have encapsulated it better it was oh, the it was bo- close friendly one yeah it was <laughs> both it was both mean and true it's it so was good. it was good it yeah. was very good my yeah. favorite and uh, we can change the subject after this because i don't want to ruffle too many feathers but mine was the one after the memphis game last year that you when you won and you punched the ticket oh yeah and then uh, yeah we don't have to go because there's rules on this podcast about certain things so we don't have to go any deeper into that but i loved it it was yeah. it was absolutely classy and uh, well done yeah yeah um i don't actually have a ton of other things on my list to talk about i'm not saying we need to end now i'm just saying like i'm i'm open the floor to uh to kind of what we want to talk about dude well i we've added questions to um our list and i'm not even looking but this is my favorite one and i and I do, have, do you think we asked them the percentage mentality i don't think so no that's a new question so in the game of football it is very physical it's also very mental what percentage would you say is physical and what percentage would you say is mental um that's tough because i think you need a certain baseline of fitness for the mental part to be relevant, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It doesn't... You can be smart, but if you can't run... If you can run or you yeah. can't cover ground or, you, you know, you, then you can play chess, but you can't play, you know, soccer. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, assuming you have, you know, you, you meet that criteria of, like, okay, you can compete and you can play and you can run and move, then... I'd probably say, you know, if you take all of our players as sort of all pretty fit, I would say that probably the mental part's at least seventy percent. Nice. Because it's it's huge. It's um just how you approach the game, how you prepare for a game, just being in the right mindset and feeling you know, I've as a striker I know the difference between going into a game feeling confident or you know, going into a game where you are like haven't scored in three games and you're like, oh, you haven't scored in the first 20 minutes and you see the coach sending up the other striker to warm up, you know, it's just like I know the difference in like how how you feel and how to, it's almost like keeping composure. Like, how do you keep composure right. in, a, in a in a period like that? Yeah, just like, you know, like on last year, for instance, when you're kind of on a roll and you're feeling good and you, you get the balls coming towards you and just like, okay, bottom corner, bang, goal. Instead of like the ball coming and, oh, my God, I can't miss, I can't miss, I can't miss. Like, oh, I missed one last game or I missed one five minutes ago. Like, if you start thinking like that, it just, it doesn't end well, right? So I just, just being in, in a good spot, like mentally, is just, it's everything really. Yeah. How do you keep from, how do you have that? Like, I think Ted Lasso calls it the goldfish, right? Like, how do you... Uh... Yeah. How do you keep? For, how do you stay with the strikers? Like the number one thing for a striker, I feel like is not is forgetting about the last chance, whether it went yeah. in or didn't go in. Like how yeah. do you? How do you? Is there any like practical tips you can give to like youngsters? Like, or or yeah. Um. Yeah, obviously you want to forget about it. I'd say it's a lot easier to forget about it if you've if you've scored in the last five games, like if you've, if you're on a roll, it's like, okay, it's easy to just go next one versus I've struggled a bit with that, like not last year, but the year before, but because I felt the chances, not that I missed a lot of chances, but I knew they didn't come as often. Mm -hmm. So 
it would weigh on you. Like I, I felt like I could go four games without a shot on goal, and I'd be like, "What's going on? What am I doing?" Because I felt like I was sort of trying to do the right things, but I wouldn't, you know, get put in the right spots or have. We wouldn't really create a lot of chances. Just not. It, it didn't work out for us like that. Sure. Not not to point any fingers at anyone or anything, but it was just when you're in a striker in that type of team, it's a lot hard to just it's a lot harder to just stay composed and and just focus on doing the things right because you know that okay this this opportunity might not come again for next 180 minutes so not to make this again not not about like fuller versus rod necessarily but like coaches you've played for in the past or like playing in gen in soccer in general do you think playing in a system like rod tends to play right where the the whole idea is to be ball dominant right to create lots of chances is that easier for a maybe not easier might be the right word but maybe more like mentally a little easier because you know there may be more chances coming? Think about that it... why I slightly disrespectfully aim your mic a little bit. Just make sure. Yeah, well, first, I just want to say nothing against Fuller, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Fuller still, he was the one that brought me to Chattanooga, and I, I don't think, I think Fuller did what he thought gave us the best chance to win, right? Like, mm-hmm. f- like I spoke to him a lot. Like, he took, like, there was no way I was scoring 20 goals a season for that team, and he knew that, right? Sure. But he knew that, okay, we can maybe play a way that gives you more chances, but then we're not going to win games, right? So sure. it was more about with with the kind of the talent we have available right now, how can we win this game 1-0, or how can we not lose? Yeah, of course. And, I mean, you have to you sort of play the cards you're dealt, right? So it's n- nothing against him whatsoever. Sure, of course, of course. So, yeah, one thing is obviously the style of play, but it also comes with the talent around you. When you have wingers that you know are going to be the outside back more often than not, you have attacking midfielders that can slip you in at any moment, or you just you feel so much you're so much much more dangerous all the time, right? Like you're not. It doesn't. It's not always on you to mm. to pull the rabbit out of the hat. Mm-hmm. It like we know we have the talent and the guys and the structure to to create chances consistently yeah no it makes perfect sense yeah. you were in the i think it's the memphis game there was a couple like slipped in balls especially after corners that were like well i think we'll see later in the season some as the team as the team gels right as as like everybody gets more sharp as people learn each other's movements like there's yeah. some there's some stuff to build on there oh absolutely yeah i am i'm excited um who is the biggest trash talker this year in practice Ooh, great question practice and maybe in the, maybe you've had enough games to know who in games is as well, but um, biggest trash talker. Because last year was easy. It's like, and why is the answer Nick Spielman? Um, yeah. But like, <laughs> this is a whole new roster. It's not a whole new roster, but it's a lot of new players. Um, shout out Speed Racer. Yeah, shout out Speed Racer. Got got a yeah. start in yeah, uh, a clean sheet. Yeah, for Independence. Yeah. Love it, man. Yeah, love it for for Nick. He deserves yeah. he deserves good things, and I'm happy for him. Yeah, absolutely. I wish him well. Wish him wish him all the best. Um, but who's the biggest trash talker? I, I'm not sure if we have a lot and right now, especially in practice, I'm sure there's obviously a big difference in games and of some guys, you know, treat teammates a bit differently than they would an opponent on a weekend. So, mm. um, I, I usually like mess around, but it's always just like tongue in cheek type, type stuff. Never anything really mean. Um, yeah. So that was going to be my next question. Then like, do you talk trash? And like, if you do, what kind of trash do you talk? No, I I, I never really engage in that stuff because I just feel like it, it takes you away from the game. So mm. that's a seventy percent mental. Like it's not yeah. trying to lose. Yeah. Do you, no. <laughs> do you ever say something? Do you ever say something nice to the uh, to the center back? Like a, after they tip your shot and it goes right out of bounds, you're like, "That's good." Yeah. Good no. Tell. I, I sometimes yeah, and I just like you know having a friendly tone with the uh, the center backs. Just they're less likely to kick you and. <laughs> You know, maybe if they like you, they'll like, maybe they'll give you an extra half a yard and I can take advantage of that. So, yeah. So, yeah. But sometimes I'll talk just to distract them and be like, oh, you know, oh, it's, where'd you, where are you going after the game? Or, oh, what's the good restaurant around here? <laughs> Something like that just to, to throw a mic conversation. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I always, uh, I always, I always find it interesting when you see, um, 
and I, I see it in like big European competitions sometimes where like a center back and a striker will come together and then one will help the other one up and they look genuine. And sometimes it has to be fake, right? But yeah. sometimes they look genuinely like, hey, you're good. Like, let me help you up. Like, and they seem like very amicable right. after they just like ran into each other. Maybe not a foul, but like they just, you know, they had a hard play and like, you know, the ball went out of bounds or whatever else. And I always find that dynamic interesting. Yeah, because I think it's probably more like more and more in high at a higher level because usually the higher up you go the sort of the the mental game is strong there's more people are just usually smarter and mm. like they they're like their emotional intel- intelligence is just it's just better but it's just just because a, a center back tackled you hard it doesn't mean that he hates you or he had something against you personally it's just, it was his job right so if if I get tackled, then it's nothing like malicious or anything like that. It was just a good block or, you know, a, a strong challenge. Then, yeah, fair play. Like, good on you. I, you know, if if I push someone over, you know, I'm going to help them up. Like, it's this just sort of part of by being colleagues and and have that mutual respect for one another. Like, yeah, we still want to win. I still I still want to beat you, but it doesn't mean that I have to be be a douche. Yeah, oh, I love that. I love that. That's so professional, and you ended it with douche, which is just like, which just makes me so happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly how I think. Like, yeah, yeah, same. I used to be. I I think ten years ago, I my trash talking is just like throwing f bombs at you. You know. Yeah. But now, like, if I'm playing as an adult, I like just don't even think about that anyway. And I, I think that professional complex has to come into it too. Like, you you literally use the word colleague. You know. What yeah. I mean? Like, you guys are playing. It, you might not be teammates, but you are collectively doing something together right and so that it, that is pretty cool and trying to make money and feed your family okay. yeah yeah i mean none of us at this level are getting rich we do it because we love the game right and because we're happy doing what we love so it's yeah you gotta respect it i feel like you're doing a little bit of coaching now yeah yeah a little bit yeah are you doing some coaching in the academy or is it just private lessons uh, what mainly are you doing? just individual sessions yeah private lessons if somebody wants to reach out to you to get a private lesson how do they do yeah, that just uh my phone number i guess or dm you on twitter maybe yeah that works as well i guess uh yeah no i'm all i'm op- always open to take on you know new players so beautiful yeah if you yeah. want to if you want to learn how to uh hit the ball with both feet in wild ways yeah no I, yeah yeah i i love honestly it, it's really fun coaching and it does it does you know i really really enjoy it you and you concentrate on the striker position Primarily, uh, or are you? No, not necessarily. I gotcha. do. I coach some players that are strikers, but I also coach some players that are defenders or midfielders. And it's you know, they're most of them are so young. It's more about just mastering the fundamentals and sure, right, just improving the basics. It's not really oh, how can I knuckle a ball how, from thirty how Ameri- yards? How, Ameri- when you're how American? How American am I too? You know? <laughs> oh, what position are you teaching them about scoring yeah. goals? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of scoring goals, real quick, one question I want to ask is what's your favorite goal so far for CFC? For CFC? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, you're um, good. He's like, there's so many. That's, yeah, no, it's tough. It's, and why is it the uh, penalty against Michigan Stars? And the, <laughs> yeah, and that, was, that was pretty cool. Like, obviously, a game winner, like, coming off l- the bench. Late, late in a game, it's always, it, it's always really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, a uh, favorite goal. I think it was a penalty, right? Wasn't that a penalty, or was that not a penalty? It was a penalty. Yeah, yeah it was a penalty. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. No, Is that it? You think that's it? It might. It might be. Honestly, yeah. I uh, hate to say penalty for my favorite goal, but I'd like to say just I haven't scored it yet. It's it's, it's there coming. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> that's that's the best answer. There we go. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up right there, boys. Marcus, thank you for joining us on what should be, hopefully you're watching this on YouTube, our first ever uh, video podcast. Or from, first ever from, from this from studio. studio. Sorry, Breezy. sorry. Yeah. We've done two really nice professional video podcasts. If people want to check out the goal special, which we'll have to redo maybe next year. I don't know. We'll have to redo it at some point. Yeah, we definitely um, need to. And, and if you're watching this episode, you're in on the uh, the OG because like we've got a mic we, stand we got to figure out here. Like we got a million things we haven't uh, <laughs> haven't worked out. And we'll work out the kinks. It's gonna it's gonna come along together. It will. But thanks everybody for listening. Marcus, thanks for joining us. Jay, thanks, thanks for having me. Puppies, peace. Mm-hmm.